All right, guys, welcome to Catapult Carnage. My name's Chris. You remember a few weeks ago, some of you might remember, I posted up a Q&A section um, on my community page of uh, my channel. So I'm going to answer some of them questions now before we do the giveaway draw. T. Allen, can you tell us about a bit of your his own history as a catapult shooter? What age did you start? What were your early setups like? What got you into it in the first place? First bit of game you ever took, first carry you built, etc, etc. So I was always into the outdoors, into the countryside. Um, whenever I was a small child, my grandfather, God rest him, used to take me across the fields, um, show me wildlife sign, badger sets, um, wild birds, etc, etc. And that really um, gave me the love and passion for the outdoors and for the countryside. Um, they showed me a little bit of woodland four or five fields away from where we lived. Um, they called it the Crazy Woods. And my father actually played there when he was a child and I played there when I was a child. It's all stripped now and there's houses on it, but that's where I used to go and play. And I remember being there and seeing a rabbit from the woods in the field and thinking to myself, I'd love to catch that rabbit. You know, I had a prey drive from that young age. Um, so, Whenever I was about nine or ten, I wanted a pellet gun, and my father wouldn't get me a pellet gun. But he would get me a slingshot, a catapult, and the catapult he got me was a Barnett Black Widow. Um, and it was actually a limited edition one, it was a hunter version, and it had a camouflage handle and thicker, heavier black tubes, and I loved it. And my friends had one apiece as well although they had the standard one, so I thought I was extra cool with this um, limited edition hunter model version, whatever way they marketed it. <coughs> Excuse me. So I messed around with that for like two or three years when I was a kid. Shot right hand hold, so I was shooting, drawing with my bad hand. I couldn't hit anything. Um, then obviously as I grew into a teenager, social life developed, you know, girlfriends, drinking, partying, whatever. So whenever I was like 18 or no, 19 or 20, I kind of came away from that and I was like, you know, I need, I was doing a bit of kickboxing, a bit of training, and I was getting into more hobbies and uh, social things away from kind of Irish culture of beer and stout and drinking and fighting and whatever. So I was on YouTube and I was searching small game hunting and I was looking at getting a bow, but obviously bow hunting's illegal here, so never got one. But I did stumble across Gamekeeper John's old video, Bad Boys, if you remember it. Um, and that really inspired me. So bought a Gamekeeper catapult, um, practiced for ages, shooting the way John did, right hand hold, instinctive the way I did when I, when I was a kid. Still couldn't hit anything. And then I stumbled, stumbled across Bill Hayes's original how to aim video it must be 10 or 11 years old now you'd think it was filmed on like a caveman's camera it's all pixelated and all but that's what i learned to aim on that that's all we had at that time that was the only aiming video on youtube um so from about 2011 i've been shooting slingshots seriously um first catapult i made was based off a template i got off google it was made out of plywood it was like a bill hay style side shooter i was shooting 25 to 20 double theraband gold with 12 mil lead. First bit of game I took was a feral pigeon in a warehouse extension we were building at work. Um, and I I was elated at having hit and shot and killed this pigeon, you know, it was like, this was probably two years of me been into it, you know, before I was good enough to hit something. Um, but because we only had that one video at the time, you really, it was a lot of self-taught things, you know. I, I really had to teach myself. I shot the way Bill did at the start. I was like nearly semi-butterfly, which is very hard to start. Um, to start that style of how to learn, and obviously it's a lot easier to start with a fixed anchor. But yeah, that's, that's pretty much my history of the whole thing. I could go on and on for hours, but obviously I've got more questions to answer, so... Let's go on to the next one. Thanks for that, um, T. Allen. Tom Tinker, what is your favorite current hunting setup for eight mil steels? Roughly what feet per second is it chucking them at? Um, 
my setups change quite often but I'll tell you I've got three band cutting templates I use I've got a 20 to 12 a 22 to 12 and a 24 to 12 okay and I'm currently shooting 0.6 and 0.7 sniper sling in the summertime I will exclusively shoot 0.6 right now it being winter the thicker 0.7 withstands the cold much better so I'm currently everything is banded up bar one catapult of mine everything is banded up 0 0.7 22 to 12 and that's what I'm really liking as for feet per second I don't bother with that and even if I was able to give you stats mine will be totally different to yours my draw length is different my stretch ratio di is different my hold time is different so um, FPS isn't really something worth discussing I don't even have a crony anyway Will Keenan <clears throat> when you shoot game in a tree that's high sometimes my shot goes off because of the angle I arc at do you have any tips yes don't aim like this bend at the hips bend at the hips and that will keep everything aligned don't just move your shoulders your whole torso has to has to bend with the shot Chris Conlon what bands and taper would you recommend for 8.7 mil still um, you know there's so many variables it's, it's so hard to recommend setups for the reasons I gave before like um, stretch ratios draw lengths uh, aim times um, weather conditions temperatures you know 8.7 mil steel if I was going to shoot 8.7 mil steel right now I'd probably shoot 0.7 sniper sling 24 to 12 or 22 to 12 and that would be pretty good Philem McCartan McCartan have you tried the GZK TTF sideways what do you think of it if you have also is the Hammer Pro worth the money no I haven't tried the TTF sideways the Hammer Pro is a very good slingshot although um, the Mini Hammer is just as good and it's cheaper and I, I actually prefer the Mini Hammer it's more robust Owl Shadow I use precise 0.75 yellow 24 centimeter length with 8 mil lead what tape room would you recommend it feels quite heavy and slow I feel like my tape ring is off than what it should be 8 mil lead 0.75 you could probably drop down to a 0.7 to be honest 24 centimeters long you must have a very long draw so you don't you don't need the the longer your draw is the, the you can afford to go lighter because you know the shot has much more time to accelerate so if it's feeling slower than it should be um, either do a more extreme taper or drop down a thickness or two you could probably get away with 0.7 or 0.65 there okay Josh Punto Josh has because I remember him has uh, ordered one of my Titans how long does it take you to make one of your Titan hunters from start to finish it probably takes me about an hour and a half two hours um, I put the order in for the number of catapults that I want cut out of a sheet this is the last sheet I had cut I had a hundred catapults cut um, so I get them two-dimensional by two-dimensional I mean it's just a square frame so I take them in I countersink the back of the frame with two different drill bits and there's a reason for that um, I countersink the back of the clips I round off the whole frame um, I fit the clips I then sand it through seven different grits I polish it I um, on, the, on my polishing wheel then I give it a little quick polish by hand to clean off any um, compound and just to give it that little extra shine um, then I, I take them in and I wrap them and it takes about 
half an hour to wrap them. So it takes probably an hour to make the catapult and probably another half an hour to wrap the catapult. Now that time that I have that it takes me to make them is dr drastically cut down because my setup in the shed is more efficient than it used to be. Um, and I've, I've just made so many of them, I'm efficient at doing them now. You know, whenever I started doing them, it took, I had less machinery, less tools, it took me much longer and they, they weren't as good. You know, they're, they have evolved since I started them in 2017. So I hope that answers your question. They're all, they're precision cut and then they're, I don't know if you can say handmade. I'm calling it handmade because I have to have my hands on every one as it's being made. They're not machined out. I'm not buying them in in bulk. I'm, you know, uh, drilling them myself, routering them myself, sanding them myself, polishing them myself, wrapping them myself. So, and you know, that time is reflected on the amount that I have made so far. So I hope that answers your question, Josh. And thanks for um, shopping with me. Tom Keenan. Hi Chris, hope you and your family are well. Do you use different bands in the winter? And does your hunting range change? Also, would you hunt with those darts you've been playing with? Yes, Tom, I do. Tom's also bought a Titan Hunter. Thank you, Tom. I hope you still like it. Yes, I do, as I said before, usually go up the thickness in the winter because the thicker bands do withstand the the uh, cold much better. Um, there's videos online on Jorg Sprav's channel and there's one on the Smarter Everyday channel. When you first draw your bands back, um, they store some of their energy as heat. Um, the longer you hold, like if you pull a band out, maxed out really quick and touch it to your top lip, that'll feel warm. The longer it's pulled back, it starts to cool off. When it starts to cool off, it's losing energy. Um, obviously it's going to cool off quicker in the colder weather, so the thicker bands um, hold that heat, store that heat a little bit longer so they withstand the cold and they maintain their speeds a little bit better. So like I'll have a summertime band and a wintertime band. Like I remember shooting, a, I had this batch of Theraband Gold, I got it off uh, Tony Standish back in the day. Theraband Gold used to be so inconsistent, it was terrible, Ew, so frustrating. I, I don't even know what it's like anymore, I assume it's still terrible because nobody shoots it. But I had this five metre roll I got off him and it was fantastic, I got it in the middle of the summer. And I remember the first really cold day, and I was shooting like a 30 to 20 band. The first really cold day, um, good tight frost, I went down to the forest. I was actually trying to make a YouTube video, just a few target shots, I never ended up posting it. I couldn't hit a barn door because the shots were like, I could have spat them faster. And, and like the stuff was magic in the warm weather. But then as October rolled in and the frost started to come, the, the speed and power and energy was just sapped out of it. So yeah, hope that, hope that answers your question. Amber Creasy, are you doing any more videos for PFS? Yeah, I probably will at some point. I'm not overly into PFS. They're not exactly exactly popular, so um, I will at some point. Joe D, I know you don't use tubes, but if you were to use one for the rest of your time with catapults, what size would it be in ammo? It would prob it would be a loop tube. It would probably be 1745 or 1842. Probably. If I only had to use one, it'd probably be... Oh, it's too hard to choose. I'm thinking 1745, but then 1745 is a right old pull. Looped 1745, it would probably be the 1842. Looped 1842. Josh, again, what's your favourite game to hunt meat? Without a doubt, squirrels. Late autumn squirrels, loads of fat on them, delicious. And they're, they're very, very challenging to hunt. Um, Stephen of all trades, as the weather gets colder, where where do you practice or how do you hunt? Do you, do the bands stay consistent or do you use different ones? I use different ones. I don't practice just as much, but I do practice a little bit. And I only just don't practice as much because there's less daylight. Jake, 
Have you ever found that shooting with wet bands affects the shot much? I don't even bother. I don't even bother because yeah it does really badly. Would you ever consider doing some custom custom slingshots, fork, tip width, gap, fibre optic stuff such as even stuff such as that even customs of the Titan? Um, I might do. There's plenty of guys out there that do custom slingshots, you know. And there's guys that are, do it very good. There's a lot of money and materials, there's a lot of time in it. Um, I just, I can't see me having the time to do it with the catapults that I'm making and my work and my family. I can't imagine myself having the time to spend 10 hours on a really nice custom slingshot, you know. What would I even charge for it? You know, I don't want people to be going, oh, did you see how expensive that thing is Chris was making, but, you know, to spend 10 hours making a slingshot for somebody, I'd probably need a few quid. Richard Guest, if I want to shoot lighter ammo, 8mm for example, but my rubber is all 0.6, is a small taper 15 to 10 for example a fair shout? I'm just being tight to be honest. Um, 0.6 is fine, Richard, 0.6 is fine. I shoot a lot of 0.6, a lot of guys that shoot 8 mil will shoot 0 0.5, 0 0.55, but my fixed anchor is, my draw length is quite small, H hence why I need the thicker stuff, you know, like uh, draw length of um, 27 inches, what mine is, is my my taper of my setup is going to have to be different to a man with a 33 inch draw, a man with a 33 inch draw can get away with something much narrower and lighter. So yeah, like 0 0.6, 0 0.6 is 100% mate, 100%, 20 to, 22 to 12, 20 to 12, something like that, perfect. And then you can just adjust your stretch ratio after that. Another thing, another little tip I'll give if guys want to shoot lighter ammo with what they consider to be overpowered bands, so saying somebody said, oh that band is too thick for that ammo, yeah it might be. I'll give you an example, 0.75 for 8 mil steel, it's too thick. What you can do to remedy that is a much more extreme taper, so like a, a 12 mil taper, and that'll increase the efficiency between that thickness and that ammo size and weight. Um, you can also adjust your, your stretch ratio, so if you've got something that's overpowered, 0.75 for 8mm steel, for example. Make your bands 15mm longer, 20mm longer, or make that uh, taper more extreme, or both. So that's just some of the questions, guys. Um, I hope that helped some of you guys out. Um, drop more comments below, more questions below. I'll try and get back to you. Um, so let's, let's, uh, sort this giveaway out. Okay, so let's do a giveaway. Oh. Now, let's do some random scrolling. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Boom. Come on, focus. Rich, Richie Taylor. Beautiful catapult, m nice man shed set up. Here's the better 2021. Especially the catapult community getting us all through lockdown. Great content. Merry Christmas 2020. Rich, catapult's off to you, buddy. Congratulations, my man. All right, guys. Thanks ever so much for watching. We're going to do another giveaway soon. I really appreciate all your comments, your likes, your supports, your subscriptions. Um, well done, Richie. And I'll see you guys in the next one.